This is a phenomenon I have hoped for years that I would actually have both in my shop at the same time in order to show people. Older peerless axles are prone to snapping. As you can see, that spiral right there goes around the entire thing until it hits this keyway. This is a newer style MST. The original series of MSTs came with the same type of axle material as an older Peerless 800, 801 series. But on a newer one, rather than snap, if you look, you can see it bent. And they will literally twist like this one has. They will twist to the point that they actually lift in the case and they jam the whole axle assembly. So if you're dealing with newer ones, they will twist the axle. If you're dealing with older ones and you bind them up on a really big tire, they will twist off and shatter the axle. So anyways, we're going to break these open. I'll show you guys the inside, and we'll see if that spare one that I have will end up going in this thing. The Allen key for the shifting ball spring retainer is usually a 3 16 if it hasn't been ground out or messed up. And like an MST, there is a hidden bolt down in here. As far as I know, there aren't any that have bolts coming up from the underside. That's usually an MST thing to have hidden bolts right here that come up from the underside. But that is always filled with crummy caca and everything, so these can be really badly corroded. It is what it is. If you manage to break that off, you can drill all the way through and put a quarter 20 nut and bolt through. I went to start prying around the outside of this thing in order to break the RTV sealant and it seems to already be broken so I don't know whether it was the axle shattering that did it or what but we're going to tap this and that'll pop that loose there we go Actually looks really good inside and for once we managed to go and have the stupid shifter ball Stay in place So good. We don't have to go hunting for that And there's our broken axle. So this whole assembly should rotate this way So if I lift that bearing out and I rotate it towards me That should remove just like that well, caca. Can you tell why it is we're in a well caca? There's a broken tooth there. So that gear is done for. And my parts one has a broken tooth in exactly the same spot. I guess we're going to have to hunt around and see if I can find the other parts transmission. Okay, the wind outside just will not let up. So, here is our spare we've been saving for a while. This came out of a rear CVT pulley Toro setup. They were really, really popular in Europe, and they tried to sell some Toros like that here in the United States. And they just did not take off. So they had a CVT-style giant clutch pulley that was huge and stuck out, which is why this has a really weird extended shaft on it with two separate clips. We're going to rip this apart and see if we can pull the parts we need out of it. The other problem is, is this has encapsulated D-hubs in it, which are rusted entirely solid and will not come loose. So the tires and the axles are, you know, screwed. 
So we're going to see what we can do to pull parts out of the rest of it. I always wondered what was up with this transmission because it refused to shift out of gear and that's part of the reason why I set it aside as a parts transmission. It turns out that the shift ball had rusted in place to the point that it literally would not shift out of the gear it was stuck in. That's a new one on me. I've never seen them do that before. On the other hand, this looks to still be in good condition. If it wasn't being used out of the gear and everything, then there is no reason anything would be broken. We're going to pull this out, do a whole ton of cleaning, and then rip these axles out and see if we can put the other axles in. If there's one statement I find stupid, it's when people say brake cleaner is brake cleaner. No, it's not. This uses the active ingredient of Tolua something or other with acetone. This basically is just acetone with a little steroids added to it. This will eat this old-fashioned grease. This does nothing almost. These are both the same exact price, pretty much. But this one does way better on old grease. I'll post a link for this down below. At some point, if you work on this kind of stuff, somebody is going to refer to a Jesus clip. These, when they come off the ends of these axles, are just as bad as a Jesus clip. They will shoot like 10 feet without any question and disappear. So when you go to pop them out of here, take them off one at a time, slide the axle, pull it up through, and then set it down to the side. When you go to put them in, it's the same exact idea. Slide it down through next to the pin, onto the axle, and then slide the second one on and clip them in place. I know the other question that's going to come up is how do you remove the spider gears in this? See that pin right there next to my thumb? You have to drill that. You have to drill it entirely out in order to be able to get that pin to come out of there. Because it doesn't come out the other side. See the casting? So if you break those spider gears, well, let's just say life's going to suck worse for you. Here we go. We got the axle swapped over. We got that dropped in. We made sure to roll it around, get some lube on it. We threw in some 90 weight in order to kick things up a little bit and get it moving again. We made sure to find some washers that were for some reason missing out of this one when I tore it apart. There's supposed to be little three-quarter inch shim washers here in order to keep grit and grime from getting into the bearing. So I grabbed some of those from Tractor Supply and got those kicked in. These in the PDF that comes from Peerless do not say anything about RTV sealant. I put some in out of the fact I know where this thing's going to probably end up. Therefore, hopefully it keeps a little bit of the water out, but it is what it is. I'm going to click everything on, throw it back together, drop in the shift balls, and then double check everything works. Here we go. So we've got tape on to make it easier to see. We've got neutral, so it rolls around. we got neutral, so nothing happens, as you can see. So forward in this direction, one click should be reverse. So there's reverse. We can see that both of those are moving now. So back one should be neutral. That should be neutral, shouldn't do anything. And then we should have first gear, which is a pain to click in on these for some reason. Yep, there's second, whatever. 
So we can see that those are moving. We can see that our brake is moving. And all the way back would be fifth gear, which we should be able to see everything move. There we go. Hopefully this was helpful. These 800 series are getting way harder to find and way more rare. That's just me trying to keep another one running. Have a good day.